Hello, my name is Rebecca Sinclair. I am the Industry Liaison Analyst for the NFA Division. I'm here today to introduce our 41F compliant ATF Form 5320.4, or more commonly known as simply the, the Form 4. The Form 4 is used to request approval to transfer and register an NFA firearm, which is subject to a transfer tax liability. Typically, this form is submitted for transfer to an individual or legal entity, such as a trust. Today, you will learn how to complete the newly released eForm 4. I will be using fictitious information for all names and addresses. They are not related to or based off of any person known to ATF in the past, present, or in the future. Please research your state and local laws regarding the legality of owning or possessing an NFA firearm to ensure compliance prior to completing the Form 4. All transfers found to be non-compliant will be disapproved. Before we get started, let's go over some vocabulary words, which will be used frequently throughout this demonstration. First, here on the left-hand side of the screen, you will see a row of folders. These folders represent the life cycle of the application. For example, if you have the application started but have not yet completed it, the document would be located here in your draft folder. If, however, you and your customer have completed the application, then it will be located here in your Submitted and Process folder, where it will stay until a final disposition is placed upon it, at which time it will move to the Approved or the Disapproved folders here. Here, in the eForm 4, we have what we have here at the top of the application is train stops. Each one of these train stops represents a navigational step at the top of the form and it is broken down into sections which mirror the paper process. Here we have the transfer or. This is the current legal registered owner of the weapon and in this case will be the FFL which is the Qualified Federal Firearms Licensee with the Active Special Occupational Tax Stamp or SOT. Additionally, we have the transferee. Transferee is going to be your buyer or responsible person of the weapon. This is going to be the individual, the trust, or the corporation or legal entity who will take possession of the weapon if the transfer is approved. So let's get started. As we open the eForm 4, you will see the intended use of this document and the special instructions for customer types of individual, trust, or legal entity. Things that they will need prior to the completion of this form are listed in this section, such as if you're an individual, a digital photo, electronic fingerprint card file, or a paper fingerprint cards ready for mailing, any and any required state or local documents. For a trust, digital photos, electronic fingerprint card file, or paper fingerprint cards ready for, for mailing, a PDF of the completed responsible person questionnaire, or RPQ, a PDF of the trust document, and any required state or local documents for each responsible person. Finally, on the legal entity corporation, we'll need digital photos, electronic fingerprint cards, file of paper, paper fingerprint cards ready for mailing, a PDF of each responsible person questionnaire or RPQ, a PDF of the entity's legal documents, and any required state or local documents for each responsible person. So let's move to the first train stop, the transfer or. This information should pre-populate with your FFL information. If it does not, or you have more than one business, please select the down arrow and then select the appropriate business which will occur with this transfer. The information that is populated below here 
comes from the Federal Farms Licensing System and the information into the SOT system. Uh, the SOT information and your licensing information should match between your business name, trade name, and premises address. If the information does not match, please get it corrected prior to submitting the form. And any forms that have mismatching information will be disapproved. The next train stop is the alternate address train stop. And this is a train stop for which you can fill in the information. This is if you have a off-site storage location for which the firearm is located that is different from your transfer ORS address. You can type that information in here and then we'll move on to the next train stop. Next, we'll move on to the transferee train stop. Here, the customer will tell you how they are purchasing this item, whether it's as an individual, a trust, or a corporation, or other legal entity. In this particular example, that's how our customer is going to be purchasing this as an individual. As they select the individual, you can see that the additional information populates below. Again, this will mirror what is on the actual hard copy form, and so if necessary, you can use that to follow along. Here, the customer is going to be uh, providing you with all of their uh, pertinent information. This address here will need to be their uh, physical home address and not a mailing address since the forms will be then um, sent via email to you and to the customer. So we will add their email address. And next, this section below, which is the transfer e-questions, will need to be completed by the customer. So the customer will read over each question and then having control over the mouse and the keyboard will then answer the questions. Once they reach the end of, the of this section, you can select the next button down here, the, the navigation next button down here at the bottom. As we move to the next train stop for the responsible persons, as this is an individual, the, some of the information that was completed here on the transfer e-train stop has migrated over to the next form, next train stop. And you can tell that there is information that is still missing because here on the left-hand side, you will see a little red triangle that tells you that there are informations and errors that need to be corrected prior to the submission of this form. To correct those, that missing information or information that is an error, you go to the right-hand side of that line and you see where under the column of actions, then we select the edit button there at the bottom. So here, as you can see, there's information that populated from the previous train stop and this is our effort to help to reduce some of the most common errors that we see, which is that the information fails to uh, be completed entirely for the RP, for the RP or responsible person. Uh, missing photos, missing signatures, uh, difficult or illegible handwriting, uh, and incomplete information on the responsible person questionnaire or the RPQ or fingerprint cards that are incomplete. So let's go through and let's finish our information for our customers, Mr. Anthony. So as you can see, as we go through this, as I tab through, it tells you when, a, when an item is a, was a required item. And of course, it does not when it's not a completed, it's not an item that is required such as a social security number. So let's go back and let's put our photo in. This is the first form that we have 
they were quite pleased with that has the complete capability of being fully electronic, and that includes the fingerprint cards. Fingerprint cards have to be what is called an EFT file, and that is that it is the specifications that are, the FBI uses to uh, validate fingerprints. So let's go through, and we are going to add Mr. Anthony's fingerprints. So pop-up box reads the um, attached EFT file for the fingerprints, and it pulls out some, some information that was added. So such as the customer's first and last name, date of birth, and whether or not the file will be accepted by the FBI. So this information should be validated against the customer that you're uploading it for. And once you have done so, you can select OK. If, for, for example, the card is, cards are unable to be validated, um, that the pop-up message will occur that says that the fingerprint cards cannot be validated. Please retry or submit hard copy fingerprints. And while this social security card or social security number is not required, it is very helpful to us uh, when the FBI is performing their background check. So let's finish his information. And once the information is fully submitted, the um, red box, as you saw here, will go away. And, the, um, and we can move forward with the application. If, however, our customer was a trust, then we would enter in their trust uh, legal name and their information as, as in before and then we would select the responsible person train stop. In the responsible per person train stop, you will not see here the red X telling you that you need to complete this line item. But it will tell you that you need at least one responsible person needed. This is a nice function that we added to the form here at the top of each one of these train stops that has a valid, an individual validation so that if there is anything missing, you're not left wondering what it was and potentially having a form disapproved for failure to complete all of the information. So if this was a trust, you would need to select the Add the Resp Responsible Person button, and then you would go through the form just as you did for the individual, and you would complete all the information. The only difference is, is that if it is a trust or a corporation or other legal entity, the information does not populate from the transferee train stop into the responsible person train stop. Once we have all the completed information, the red triangle has disappeared here, and we have no validation errors listed at the top. You can move to the next train stop. You can move there using the navigation arrows at the bottom of each screen, or you can simply select the next button, or the next train stop. Okay, now that we've completed all the information for the responsible persons, then we're going to move to the next train stop for the CLIO, or for the Chief Law Enforcement Officer. This in the event of a trust, or for the corporation, it will be for where the um, entity or the trust resides. So let's complete this information here. Now that we've completed the Clio information, let's move along to the firearm train stop. Here in the firearm train stop, um, we have the most common error that has occurred here is incomplete or incorrect weapon information or FFLs that have accidentally uh, put a serial number on there for which they have already sold to another customer. 
So here in our system, well, we've, have, we've eliminated that so that when you select the, your firearm that, or you see the firearm inventory list, it will only be firearms that are available for sale. So if it's been previously submitted um, as a pending document with some, another customer, that it will not show up on the list. So let's add the firearm. So here we go to the Add Firearm button. And it will populate with all of the information. Another added benefit that, uh, that we added was that for machine guns that are non-transferable, uh, for example, for the 9220 items, uh, they would be highlighted in red. And so if they had been accidentally selected uh, on the, for a Form 4 transfer, if you selected it, it would tell you that that was not an appropriate item to be selected. You can also here at the top search by any number of these features here. So for example, if your customer had a specific serial number that they for the item that they wanted, that you could enter the serial number here and it would pull, uh, find it in the list and pull that specific type of serial number. Same with the manufacturer or product type. So for example, if you had quite a few of silencers or you had um, the uh, SBRs, short belt rifles, short belt shotguns, you could enter that all in here and then you could go through your list. Uh, similar to is if you had a particular manufacturer, you could put the manufacturer in here and all of the manufacturer of that would pull up. Same of course with the model and so on. So in this particular case, we're going to select a, a short belt rifle for our customer. And then we select OK. In this particular case, the uh, transfer requires the necessity statement, as it tells us here at the top in the validation section. And the necessity statement box is highlighted in red, uh, indicating that it is a required field. If we had selected a silencer or an AOW a weapon, uh, any other weapon, this box would not be fillable. So let's put our answer in there. And now we can move on to the next train stop. All right, the next train stop is the electronic documents train stop. This is where you will add the customer's um, RPQs if they are anything other than a individual sale, or you can add if they have a state or a local requirement for the purchase of this particular firearm that they are acquiring. Uh, those documents would be added here. Trust documents, if you had a uh, 24 month exemption, you would add that here. Um, the any of the non immigrant alien exception documents, uh, any additional photographs that are required, uh, state or local permits, or simply other documents. For this particular sale for West Virginia and for an individual, we have no additional documents. So while we could upload um, up to 30 megabytes uh, per individual file uh, and up to 20 different types of files that um, we do not have the need for, for any of that. We do accept uh, Word documents, PDFs, Excel documents, PowerPoint, uh, JPEG, and GIF f uh, files in this train stop. And finally, in the certified train stop, we'll be making our payment and adding our digital signatures to the application prior to submission. But first, as you can see at the top of the screen here in our validation section, that we have missing or incomplete information in the following section for Clio. Now, you can navigate back by using this link here or by simply clicking on the train stop for that section. So let's go back and make the correction. As you can see, right here by the red border around the box of the required information that I have failed to enter in the agency official's title. So let's enter that now. Once the information is entered, 
We can navigate back to the certified train stop and we have been successfully validated. So now we can move on uh, to the payment and to the digital signatures. If we scroll down just a little bit, we'll see that the tax liability has now been assessed to the application. This is an amount that is automatically calculated based on the weapon type selected that's in this purchase. In this particular demonstration, we have selected a sharp barreled rifle, and therefore the tax liability is a 200 tax stamp. However, if it had been the AOW, also known as the Any Other Weapon, it is a $5 transfer fee. Next, we have the internal control number, and this is a field that's created just for the transferor, and it can be used for searching an application that has been located in the draft, submitted in process, approved or disapproved folders. This information is entered into the field but will not show up in the completed form, and I suggest using the customer's telephone number, mostly because it's something that they will least likely to forget, and um, it's easier searched. However, the customer, you can use the customer's account number, the serial number for the firearm, customer's first and last name, literally any unique identifier. This is not a required field, uh, but it is a tool for the transfer or to locate a specific form, especially when you might have hundreds of applications in those folders. So let's enter the customer's telephone number, and now we're ready to complete the form and add our digital signatures. So as you can see here, that um, we have the certification section here under penalties of perjury. But first, I highly suggest that you go back and either visit each one of the train stops uh, to verify that the information is accurate, or there is a view um, link here to view the PDF copy of the form. Once you've uh, satisfied that everything is complete and accurate, by either viewing the form through the, through the link or inspecting each train stop, we'll move on to this certification section. The transferee and the transferor will read their certification statements and verify that they agree with the statement by selecting the box. And once both parties have selected their box, the payment button is illuminated and can now be used. Once you select the pay button, it will navigate away from the ATF website and to the pay.gov uh, screen. This is where you're going to make the tax liability payment. And at the top of the screen, you will see that a payment amount that is going to be assessed to the credit card. And then we enter in the customer's information. Currently, the, um, the payment can only be made by a credit card but in the future, we will be adding in PayPal, digital wallet, and electronic um, checks. And once the payment information has been entered, just review the payment information. The customer will uh, make the check the box saying that they agree to the payment and select continue. Once the uh, payment has been made, you'll be gone back to the waiting document. And the payment information will pop up here. Um, this is uh, crucial information to know, especially the e-form ID number 
and the pay.gov number. If something should happen uh, during the submission of the payment, such as you temporarily use, lose internet connection or it's interrupted, uh, that in the payment fails to link to the account, that we'll need that information in order to locate the payment. It will also be emailed uh, to the FFL, and um, so they'll have a, uh, an email copy of that information. So now that the payment has is, is been accepted and linked with the application, now you can see that we can sign and submit the form. We click the button. And we have a four-part validation based off of the uh, customer's information that they have provided in their user profile for their first name, last name, email address, user ID, and unique PIN number. This is, this is used so that they can digitally sign the form with uh, an electronic signature. So once they read through the statement, they will enter their username. And their PIN number that they have already pre-selected. and then it will move to the transfer ORS information. You must have a ATF eForms account in order to uh, submit or to purchase uh, on a Form 4. And now you can see here by the pop-up that the document has been uh, successfully received by ATF. Uh, here's your uh, application uh, control number, and if you take that number and we navigate over to the Submitted in Process folder, select the, the application type, and you can see that it is here at the top of the screen. The um, Each one of these boxes here are completely searchable. So if we entered in the customer's telephone number, because that's what we put in the internal control number, it will give me every purchase that is uh, in a submitted and processed status for that particular customer. So now that the application is received by ATF, the transfer or and the transferee will be receiving several emails with attached documents, such as the copy for the submitted application, uh, for their records, the Clio copy uh, that needs to be submitted to the uh, chief law enforcement officer that was identified in the Clio train stop, and, um, and then cover sheets if there's any fingerprint cards that were not submitted electronically, a copy of the payment information, and eventually an approved or a disapproved form. Here are the examples of the emails, notifications that are received by the transfer or FFL or by the individual who signed the forms. If this is the payment information that was sent to the FFL. Here is the email that is going to be sent to the transfer E who signed the forms. Uh, this is the copy for the Clio. It also provides them with their permit control number, and their reference number that is utilized by the uh, FFL, the date of submission, their form type, and of course some information, some telephone numbers to call the NFA. Next, we have the document for that would be received by the. Uh, FFL and by the individual who signed, who digitally signed the forms. And this is their cover letter and a copy of their uh, submitted document. Again, it still references the number for the FFL that they entered into the system as their reference number, the submitted date of the form, and the form that has been submitted. And that concludes this demonstration. Inclusion. NFA is committed to our processing goals of 90 days from receiving a completed application 
to include fingerprint cards to a final disposition. In an effort to meet these goals, the eForm 4 application does not include an option for error resolution like it does with the paper process. What this means to you is in the paper process, if the form is found to have missing or incorrect information, the application would be returned to the transferor for correction and returned before processing, which is just not possible in the eForm 4 application and still maintain a 90-day turnaround. The eForm 4 is 100% completed correctly or it is disapproved and refunded for correction and resubmission. As you saw in the demonstration, we have included validation mes messages at each train stop, required information indicators, and a final review validation at the completion of the application to help prevent some of the most common errors. Therefore, please review the data entry for completion and correctness prior to the payment and submission of this application. Thank you very much for your time.